just wanted to make a quick video to address something, um, a little bit of a change in production. You know, as I've been working on this, I've been trying to stay as transparent and keep the audience as up to date as possible, just to show the whole process of production and what it looks like. So let me give you the lowdown. You know, this is this is the the insight. This is the the scoop. What y'all been waiting for since you clicked on this video, which was like 20 seconds ago, but you know. I hope it was 20 seconds ago, but let's get right down to it. So as I've been working through this, crunching numbers, working through the different techniques, seeing things finally come together, it's been a crazy process of development on this entire series. Uh, I have decided to not necessarily walk back on, but to reevaluate uh, our use of stable diffusion on this project. Previously, I had uh, kind of decided that, that I was gonna do the whole thing in a different art style uh, using stable diffusion, which was kind of the direction that, you know, I was pushing for and where we were headed with it. And everything was looking pretty good on that front. The technology was developing uh, at a pretty good pace, but as of late, there's been a little bit of a stall in the development of the technology and my ability to make it work for the needs that we have. And as I've been seeing renders come out of Unreal Engine, which aren't even final, they're just what is coming out after we've done the animation and cinematography, I had to take a step back and look at things objectively and be like, what is best for this project? And kind of where I've landed is this. Changing the art style of the whole thing is not the direction. There's a certain quality that Unreal Engine is producing that is telling the story the best way it can be at this. That being said, it doesn't necessarily solve some of the facial animation <laughs> issues that we were having, but after doing some of the cinematography and seeing it actually cut together, uh, a lot of that ends up being resolved just by, you know, what lens you're looking through, which is something that I didn't have before. You know, before it was looking at the whole scene, I could see every mistake, every blemish. Um, and, you know, there's a certain level of, like, you know, insecurity and, like, you know, I didn't want to fail the project just by being like, oh, there's, like, this, you know, one missed thing where, like, the actor's performance is fantastic, but the facial animation is off. Like, how do you resolve that? And it's one of those things where, you know, as I see it start to come out, I'm like, you know what? This isn't too bad. It's a no God of War, but it's also not Starfield. <laughs> and you can figure out which end of the scale that's on. But now the question is, how will we be implementing Stable Diffusion into the project? Because I still want to use it because it's still a cool tool and it's something that we can use to enhance the overall uh, production that will just make the story that much better. So the way we're going to go about using it is to stylize certain scenes that happen in a more abstract manner, but also to create matte paintings to create a different sense of scale and something that is a little bit more reminiscent of sci-fi movies you would have seen in like the 70s to the early 2000s, um, just to set a sense of scale, to have a little bit more of an artistic touch, um, just so each frame has to be manipulated in a slightly different manner. This is actually something that came up as somewhat of a happy accident from a piece that I was working on for an upcoming promotion for the series. That is coming out soon, so stay tuned. But uh, in that, there is a shot where I tested this method and it was originally when I was setting up the shot to use stable diffusion across the whole thing. Uh, but there was this happy accident where I had done the background separately first. And then once I saw those two kind of compared, that's what kind of triggered this light bulb moment of maybe there's a different way to use this with as good as it looks and as much that it can provide and the amount of time that'll save, because that's the other big thing is even if we like started rendering now, I don't think it is computationally possible to render the whole thing out in stable diffusion and still get everything else done because there's a bunch of render passes that this needs to go through. Now I do really like the way that stable diffusion interprets certain things and they are actually coming out with some interesting things for video. You know, there's because it's open source, there are people developing stuff all the time, uh, which is really cool to see. And for, you know, like a lot of the stuff that I've put together already with stable diffusion, it looks really cool. But I think for this project, it doesn't work 
as well as it needs to. And I also recognize from the community feedback that it just is probably not the right move to make for a Titanfall fan series, which, you know, this is about getting something out to, you know, the community and being able to share it with as many people as possible. And that's one of the most important things is that this does service the community because it is a fan film. You know, if this was my own IP, something I was creating, you know, from scratch all by myself, then I would, you know, do whatever I thought was best to keep things moving. Because it's a fan film, it does need to service the community in some way. And after seeing community feedback, um, and kind of evaluating all that, evaluating all the technical side of things. You know, I think there's a way to implement it where it's useful, it's constructive, uh, it goes a long way in making the production better, but it doesn't detract in any way. And I think that's what a lot of the community members were seeing was they felt like it might detract from the overall product. And I think this is a good way to implement both. So that all being said, things are looking fantastic. This does knock a significant portion of back-end time on finalizing this out, uh, which is kind of a relief, to be honest, at this point, because <laughs> um, there's still quite a bit to go, but everything is looking fantastic. I'll probably be using Stable Diffusion more to create you know, some of the other assets around the production, but overall, uh, the way things are looking is phenomenal had a meeting with some of the team recently and they got to see some some exclusive stuff from the final thing and they were all super stoked on it and we're excited to share it with you all soon. But that's it. I just wanted to have an open and honest conversation with you guys, let you know what's up. I'm trying to keep this production as transparent and open as possible so that everybody feels like, you know, they're somewhat a part of this journey, which I hope you do because you are. Because every time people leave something constructive, it it helps the production along, which it does mean a lot when people leave those thoughtful comments. So please keep leaving those. We have stuff coming soon. We are excited to show it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I anticipated this being like a two, three minute video and the camera has been rolling for 16 minutes. Granted, I did like take a little bit of a break. My, uh, I've been recovering from yet another sickness. I don't know what it is about this year, but getting sick seems to be the thing. Not a fan of it, but hey, what can you do? Animate? Yeah, that's what I've been doing and I'm gonna keep doing it. We're getting close. It's exciting. Stay tuned.